okay, you've done the pulley lab, let's now have some analysis. I'm gonna lift the 200 gram mass. I'm gonna round off the weight to two newtons. Just to lift it straight up, my effort force would have to be two newtons. The resistance force would be two newtons. Let's say I wanna lift it 20 centimeters. That's the effort distance, which will also be the same as the distance resistance. Looks like the work in is gonna equal the work out which would be Fe times DE, and that's Fr times Dr. Looks like we're putting in 0.4 joules, and we're gonna get out 0.4 joules. And here's the demo. We have the 200 gram mass, rounded off to two newtons. Read the spring scale, it's two newtons. How hard does that string have to pull up? Two newtons. So what's the IMA? Think of it, how many times stronger does the machine make you? Well, the FR and the FE are the same. It's one. And we're calling it IMA because there is no friction here. Now for the simplest pulley setup. We'll just put a pulley at the top, throw the rope over it, and we get to pull down. What do you think the effort force will be? The resistance force is two newtons. The resistance distance will be 20 centimeters. What do you think that effort distance is gonna be? And here's the setup. Notice the pulley does not rise or fall. It's a fixed pulley. I have to read the spring scale while it moves. It's actually just a shade under two newtons. The weight of the hook and the plunger do not get read on the spring scale. So we're going to have a little error there. Well, some of you might think, why not pull down on the hook and have the whole spring scale supported this way? But then that way, you're not getting the registered weight of the whole spring scale. That's why we said you have to pull from the handle. You got to get the hook and the string. Now, I don't need the spring scale on there to study the distances. How far does that weight go up as I pull my hand down? You can measure the distances with the meter stick or we can do it qualitatively. Just take a look at the top of the box. It's aligned with the top of the weight. Now, when I pull my hand down, my hand goes to where the top of the weight was, and the top of the weight is where my hand started. These distances are the same. And that should make sense just because the rope that appears on this side has to come from the other side. If this guy goes up 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters of rope comes out on that side. That's my law of conservation of rope. So ideally, how hard would I have to pull to get this to go up? The tension in this rope must equal the weight. There's only one supporting strand. If the pulley is frictionless, then the tension on each side will be the same. So I have to pull down with two newtons because that's how much is required to lift this weight. So if we have no friction, the tension on this side of the pulley is the tension on this side of the pulley. So that means I'm gonna have to pull with two Newtons. And if that goes up 20 centimeters, my hand has to come down 20 centimeters. So if we don't have any friction, we can say the FE times DE equals FR times DR. Plugging in the data, we get the same energy on each side. So what's the IMA for using this pulley? The FR and the FE are the same. The DE and the DR are the same. The IMA is one. So it's just like lifting the thing up. So why would I want to use a pulley if I could just lift it straight up? Well, the pulley can change the direction of the FE. Now I'm pulling down. If this was very heavy, I could use my body weight to help me pull it down to get that to go up. But even if it was something light, like a flag, and that was at the top of a flagpole, hey, I don't have to climb the flagpole to lift the flag up. I can just pull down and have that flag go up. Now, what's the percent efficiency of this pulley system? It's the work out over the work in times 100. Well, they're both 0.4 joules, so it's 100% efficient. In the lab, you may not have gotten 100% efficiency, but it should be lower than 100 if there is some friction. Now, due to error reading the spring scales or error looking at the distances, you may have gotten a little bit over 100, and that's okay. But there's no way this should be 140%. Plenty of you guys had 140% efficiency, and I don't know where that's coming from. 
Now we'll put the pulley at the bottom. What would be the FA? The FR will still be two newtons. And let's say I want to raise this 20 centimeters. The DR is going to be 20 centimeters. How far will I have to pull my hand? So how hard do I have to pull? You can see that there's two supporting strings. The tension and the tension on each side are the same. They both have to add up to the weight. If that's two newtons, then each one of these is one newton. And that's pretty much what the spring scale reads. It's a little bit over one newton because the pulley weighs something and as this thing moves up, there's a little bit of friction. And now what about the distances? Looks like my hand's moving a lot further. I'm going to start with my hand at 80 centimeters, and that's where the top of the pulley is. I'm going to go up to 40 centimeters, and the top of the pulley ends up at 60. So my hand went up 40, and the pulley went up 20. Well, I think that makes sense. Less force, more distance. Sound familiar? So if this is two newtons, ideally, what's the tension in the rope? It's the same on both sides, one newton each. So my FE is only one newton. Now we saw in the demo that my hand has to move twice as far as the weight goes up. So if this was 20 centimeters, the DE has to be 40 centimeters. Now is there a way of looking at the pulley to figure this out? Well, the pulley has to go up just as far as the weight does. That means when the pulley goes up, this much rope disappears. And that much rope disappears. Where's the rope? These two strands disappear and have to appear over here now. It's the law of conservation of rope. If that's 20 and that's 20, then that's gotta be 40 centimeters of rope coming out on the other side. If there's no friction, we can say the work in equals the work out. The usual setup. But now the FE is only one Newton, but it moves 0.4 meters. The FR is still two Newtons and it's moving 0.2 meters. And we still have 0.4 joules is a 0.4 joule. So of course it's 100 percent efficient. And so what's the IMA? It's going to be FR over FE if there's no friction. Two newtons over one newton. This simple machine makes us twice as strong. The IMA is two. Now can you see how this is working? We have two strands holding up the weight. We only have to hold up half the weight. The other half is being held by the ceiling, but we have to go twice as far. So we're spreading our work out over a greater distance so we can use less force. What if there was some friction? What if that number was bigger due to the friction? We would have more energy going in than what we're getting out, and we would have a less than 100% efficiency. But that wouldn't change the distances that the ropes move. And you can still get the IMA from the distances Effort over resistance. It's still going to be two. And if you do have friction, you'll calculate the actual mechanical advantage. The FR will still be two newtons. The FE might be 1.1 newtons. So it might be a little less than two. That's reasonable for this lab. Now, what if I put another pulley at the top and throw the rope over that? That's a fixed pulley. Let's see what happens. And here we have the setup. When you read the spring scale, it reads just about one newton. And it really should read a little bit more because of the extra friction. But remember, when we're upside down, the weight of that hook and the plunger aren't included in that number. So that gives us some error. And what about the distances? My hand is going to start at 50 centimeters. The top of the pulley is at 80. I'm going to pull all the way down to the table. My hand moves 50 centimeters. The top of the pulley is at 55. So from 80 to 55, it went up 25. My hand went down 50. It's still a two to one ratio. Having the rope go over the top pulley, it's a fixed pulley, doesn't change the mechanical advantage. This weight is distributed to these two strands pulling up. This doesn't count. So back to the diagram. In theory, we're going to have one newton on each side down here. And the tension in the rope is the same when it goes across a frictionless pulley. Well, we have a frictionless pulley here too. So the tension is still one newton, 
you come down this side, and yeah, the effort force is one newton. And using the data from the lab, we saw that the weight went up 25 centimeters, and my hand had to come down 50 centimeters. It's still the law of conservation of rope. So pulley rows 25 centimeters. So 50 centimeters of rope, because there's two strands, disappeared. It all has to come out this side. So we still have an IMA of two. Oh, here's the next setup. These pulleys have a little hook on the top, and I can start a rope right there. Throw it over the top pulley, come around, and pull up. And here's the setup. I'm getting about 0.7 newtons on the spring scale. Well, that might be because we have three supporting strings. The weight is distributed to each one. My hand is going to start at 70 centimeters. The top of the pulley is again at 80. I'm going to pull my hand up to 10 centimeters. I raised my hand 60 centimeters. The pulley is now at 60. It went from 80 to 60. It went up 20. My hand went up 60. It went up three times as far. What's my FA? So if the weight is split up equally amongst these three strands, it should be exactly 0.66 repeating newtons. Well, I'm getting about 0.7 on the spring scale. And we saw that when the weight went up 20 centimeters, my hand went three times further, 60 centimeters. You can probably look at these ropes and figure that out. If the pulley rises 20 centimeters, then 20, 20, and 20 of the rope must disappear, adding up to 60 coming out up here. So let's take the 0.7 newtons times the 0.6 meters, and we have 0.42 joules work in. And the work out, 0.4 joules. So the work out over the work in times 100, that's our percent efficiency, it's about 95%. Now what about that IMA? Should we use the forces? It didn't work out perfectly, so maybe we don't use the 0.7 newtons. We better look at the distances. The machine spread the work out from 20 centimeters to 60. That gives us an IMA of 3, which matches the number of supporting ropes. And the actual mechanical advantage? Tells us how many times stronger the machine made us. We'll be able to lift two newtons with only 0.7 newtons, which is 2.86. Let's do one more example. We're going to put the double pulley at the bottom. I'm going to attach the rope at the top and bring it down, bring it around and back up, down and around the double pulley. And now we're going to pull up. At this point, you could probably count the ropes and figure that out, right? Let's see what we get. And here's the setup. That only took about a million tries because the rope keeps falling off the double pulley. But as I lift, I'm getting about 0.55 newtons. It's just a little over half a newton on the spring scale. How about the distances? Well, now I'm going to start the top of the pulley at 80 and my finger at the same height. I'm going to pull all the way up to the top of the meter stick. My hand went 80 centimeters and the top of the pulley is at 60. So if my hand goes up 80, the pulley went up 20. It's a 4 to 1 ratio. Well, the spring scale is reading about 0.55 newtons. It should read 0.5 because there's one, two, three, four strings holding this up. But don't forget, we didn't even include the weight of the pulley, so that, that factors in too. And when the weight went up 20 centimeters, my hand had to move 80 centimeters. And again, that makes perfect sense when you look at the ropes. 20 centimeters of rope, 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters, and 20 centimeters all disappeared. Has to come out somewhere. Calculating the work in, we get 0.44 joules. It's still the same DR and FR, so I have 0.4 joules for an output. Percent efficiency, it's about 91%. And you would expect it to be a little bit lower than the last one because now we have the double pulley. We have a little extra friction down here, don't we? Of course, the IMA, you can just look at the distances because we do have a little friction. So use the distances and you get four. Four, you could count the number of supporting strands. You get the AMA, you look at your forces. 
and we get 3.64. So we still had a pretty good AMA compared to the IMA. Just one more question. How much weight does the support hold up? Now think about it for a moment. If I'm holding up 0.55 Newtons and this weight is two Newtons, something has to be holding up the rest. Yeah, it's gotta be the support. It's holding up 1.45 Newtons. Now, what would be the story if there was no friction at all and that pulley was massless? We have two Newtons here. We have 0.5 Newtons here. The tension in each strand is going to be 0.5 Newtons. So how many strands are pulling down on that upper pulley? We're gonna have three each pulling with 0.5 Newtons. So the support is gonna hold up 1.5 Newtons. And it goes back to the beginning of the year, right? Forces up equal forces down. We're not accelerating this thing. Well, you've got your pulleys at home, so you could rebuild whatever you want to and correct the data, and then check out all the worksheets with these examples.